Hey guys, so this time we're going to focus on configuring the HMC console. I see a lot of people doing this and they do it in various ways. In fact, it surprises me how many ways people manage to conjure the same process up. I'm going to show you what I think is a better way, uh, what I think is the best way, but I'm sure there is a better way. No one's as perfect. All right, so I'm going to start by showing you the way that I think you should do it particularly if you've got more than one LPAR on a particular system. And then afterwards, if you want to stick around, I'm going to show you the wrong way of doing it so you can see why it's better. All right, so let's just get straight down to it because we've all got places to be. So I'm going to take a vanilla version of the ACS. It has nothing in it at all. All right, and I'm going to start by going into system configuration because we want to configure a system. So I'm going to quickly knock up a system here and we'll call this one RIT uh, Allison. Okay, so that is my connection name to the actual main system, not to the HMC. But if I start to move forward into the uh, next part, this is still about connecting to the main system. It's only when we get to these last two that we're starting to look at things to do with the console. All right, so now whipping onto the console, console's default part is to use the service host name. That's when you don't have a HMC, you're using sort of an operations console. More on that in other videos. So I'm gonna select HMC. I'm gonna leave that uh, encrypted box ticked. It doesn't change the functionality at all, but why wouldn't you want your, um, your level encrypted? You have to do zero extra work on the HMC to encrypt the connection. You have to actually do more work to stop it by unticking that. So for God's sake, let's, uh, let's get things encrypted. You can either put an IP address in there, um, so if you wanted an IP address, you can sort of whack in there, or whatever the IP address of your HMC is. So in this case, that would be a, a HMC I was going to connect to. Or if you've got an um, actual system name, so if you know, you've got a DNS setup, so it does resolution of, of names to IP addresses, then why not? Uh, just makes it a bit easier for you to recognize. It depends if you're a person like me who actually remembers IP addresses or you prefer names. This so far is all about the 5250, the text-based, the green on black console, right? the, the CLI, the command line interface. Uh, the other half of the connection when you've got a HMC, which is just as important, is the GUI. And so many people don't do that. So I'm gonna take the moment here to just go into the pull down list, select a description of HMC, and again, just pop in there, either an IP address, or you can put in the... Uh, resolvable name. Okay, so, all right. So having got to those, you think, okay, well, surely that's it. Uh, and to be honest, yes, that would work. Now that they're there, the system's now described. And if I was to click on the um, 5250 console, it would launch an emulator and it would log me in and get a choice of languages. More on that another time. Let's just log in and take a look. I get a list of all the physical hardware servers that I want to connect to. So if I was managing multiple power servers, I'd get them listed here. These are the physical servers, things you can actually touch. Inside that server, you get a list of all of the LPARs. So you see, it's quite selecty. You know, I said I was wanting to work on an Allison, which is at the top of the list, but there, you know, there are others there. So there's a better way of doing that. Okay. And so we'll go back into system configuration again. If you've just got, you know, one LPAR on one system, okay, fine, you don't need to do this extra work. Um, but in this advanced tab here, if you go into here, it allows you to put in the user ID that I just, you saw me specify to log into the HMC. I'm gonna connect to my HMC. Uh, it's now saying, uh, this is an encrypted connection whilst I'm doing the probe. Uh, is it okay to store that? Okay, so it's just a one-time deal and it needs to store it secured because you're just about to log in with a, you know, a password and do something sensitive. So I'm going to pop the password in for that. This is a one-time deal. You don't have to do it every time. Uh, let's try and type in the right password. What it's doing now is it's giving me a list of all the managed systems that it uh, can see there and all the LPARs. So I was specifically interested in this being the hunt console session for Allison 7.4. I'll tick the box for a fast path down there. Now that I've done that, if I go back to that 5250 console again, it's 
that asks me to log in. But when I do, I am straight at the Allison console. So I put my shared key in. They have to match, ladies and gentlemen. Don't try and type quickly, it just slows you down. So you see, I didn't have to select the hardware platform I was running on, and I didn't have to select the um, LPAR I was on. So it speeds up that process quite significantly. That is definitely one of the big advantages when you've got more complex systems and lots more hardware. The other thing, let's not forget, is that we put a link to the actual GUI there as well. First time you connect, unless you've got a, a trusted certificate in there, it will ask you to say, uh, this is a self-signed certificate. It is encrypted, but it's just not trusted at this point. So you've got to go ahead and trust it. Then you get your login screen. All right, so let's log in there. And this is just as important as the 5250 console itself. So I'm going to take a look at that same piece of hardware, but there's things in here that I can do that I can't do in the command line interface. And increasingly that's going to be the case. So one of the most obvious ones, if we were looking at Allison, I'm going to check the restart mode. Is it in B normal? You know, am I going to end up getting a triggering an SST console or I need to go into SST to, to manually accompany the machine? Am I in the B version or the A version of the code? You know, things along those lines, but also some extra functions like service functions, which we'll cover another time. So that is my way of doing it properly. Okay. I think it's worth the extra effort if on this session you are going to repeatedly come back to that console. If it literally is you're going there one time and you're never going to go there again, you're literally just walking up to do a job of work, then okay. I'll show you what other people do, which I don't think is as good, but admittedly, it can get you to a console session in the fewest number of clicks. They'll be inside the session manager here. Right. So this is the wrong way, or this is the one-off way. They'll click on start a new display session. And we'll get an empty session there. And they'll pop in there something like, you know, um, HMC. This is where, and so that top one is a descriptive name. This is where you either put the IP address or the resolvable DNS name. So I'll put the IP address in here, 192.168.2.193. Okay, um, we need to change the port number there, 2300. Okay, and that will probably do it at that point. So again, we get the same sort of login now, uh, saying, first of all, show me what keyboard type you're after. If the keyboard that you are looking for is not listed there, so I'm here in the UK and I am very much of a Remainer. I am not a Brexiteer, so I believe in option number 23. Uh, so I'm going to put my 23 in there and I log in. Then I can see my system and then I can see all of my LPARs and I can see that I currently have one session connected to that. Alison L pass, I'm going to join that and pop in the key. And there we are, joining it the same way. Uh, you know, other people, without defining it, will also just you know, open a browser if they want to get to the GUI and again type in HTTPS and then that IP address. Let's try that one more time. Oh, thank you, Google. Oops. Nothing like a demo to make it go wrong. So they will possibly stumble like I did. Many of you have got less fat fingers and would have typed the same, the correct address in the first time. Ha ha. Uh, so again, you need to click that trust scenario and it'll start to remember it. So if I was you, I'd use the first method. Yeah, the second method is available. I hope that was of some use. If you've got some more ideas of the type of things you'd like to see configured, please let me know.